Hey guys, welcome to this plumberparts.co.uk video. This is kind of one of the first videos that I'm filming in my new studio, and it's the installation of this top-notch Vitra toilet frame. It's kind of a special one because we're gonna have a few visitors coming in and out of here, and I don't really want all their grubby hands flushing the old Lulu, do I? So what I'm gonna install is a special infrared toilet, much like the ones you see at airports and public places, and I thought it'd be a good idea to show you that system that Vitra use, and also show you how to fit one of their toilet frames, and also do a lovely concealed toilet that's wall hung. We've got everything inside here ready for us to go, so I'm really looking forward to doing this video for you today, guys. Let's get on with it. Remember to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, and Twitter, and I'll see you soon. Remember to hold tight. So first up, let's have a quick chat about the room that we're in, what we've done already to get this job kind of ready to do, which is what we call the first fix, um, and you know how this is all gonna work out. So number one, coming in at the bottom here, beautifully brassoed and nicely clipped. We've got our cold pulp water pipe here. We've got a tee just down here. And what we're doing, we're teeing up to our cold feed for our toilet, but also running our cold further on because just around the corner here, we're gonna have a little hand basin. Now just wanna quickly draw your attention to the fact that our clips are all in line here because we found our studs going up there and that's our best method of support. Now it's a very important thing to consider because these toilets need an excellent amount of support because they are going to be taking your weight when you sit down on the loo or someone else's. So it has to be well fixed. So it's a good idea to find out, number one, exactly where your strong points of the wall are. Carrying on just further around here, we've got our cold feed going off to our kitchenette that is just behind there. And we've also got our hot feed coming from our under sink water heater going off to our little hand basin just here. As you can see, we've got our inch and a half that's got a little bit of a slope on it as well. Um, I think we'll probably be boxing all this lot in soon anyway, but for now, it's nice for you to be able to see it and see exactly how we've prepared this job. The other bit that we've done is because we know what toilet we're fitting and because we've got what's called a T-loop, uh, which is the special control unit for a Vitra, and I'll show you that in a second, uh, that needs a power supply. Now we put our power supply up here with our little plug on there. Just remember that all this is gonna get covered over and that for me is one of the best advantages of having one of these concealed toilets is because you can put all your pipework behind and get a lovely clean finish on the job when it's done. So what I'm hoping to do, what I wanna show you in this video is number one, how to measure the height of the toilet so you've got the rough sort of standard guideline for toilet height how to actually fit the frame safely so it's nice and strong, it isn't gonna fall over, and that's gonna require a little bit of carpentry. Don't worry guys, we're plumbers, we can nail the carpentry, easy peasy. Then I'm gonna show you how to properly board out all this so it doesn't let the toilet collapse through because sometimes what people do is they board this stuff with just plasterboard. I highly recommend that you don't do that. And then finally, I'm gonna show you how to fix the actual Vitra toilet together, get the waste done, get the cold water done, and then get it all put back together and hopefully working. And then we'll get all the water on and show you this Vitra toilet working. So first up, let's have a quick look at what we've actually got in our box. And this is our main piece of equipment. This is the actual Vitra toilet frame. Now, if we have a closer look at this, these are very, very simple. Um, let's just have a look at the basics first. We've got our actual cistern here. It's got polystyrene around it to stop any condensation because obviously you're gonna be pouring cold water into a warm environment sometimes if the loo's getting flushed quite a lot. We've got our actual flush pipe here which is integrated into the frame. We've got a big gap here that I'm gonna talk to you about in a minute and that's for our four inch waist. We've got our bottom adjustable feet. There's two nuts on here that adjust these each way, so that's pretty cool. So we can adjust the height of it in a second. And then integrated right inside, we've got our fill valve just here. We've got a flexible connector that goes up to where our little touch shut off valve is here. And then that goes onto the top, just like so. We've got a standard half inch male thread there. At the back here, we've got our spaces set out for how far we wanna set our toilet away from the wall. We've then got our flush in here, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. You'll notice these two here, this is where we're gonna set up our flush control arrangement later on the job in the second fix side. Of course, we've always got the box that I call the gubbins box. Uh, and that's where you've got all your fittings for different types of systems and installs. So number one, and the thing that strikes you first is your waste outlet, okay? So this goes, this piece here will fit into a standard four inch socket, doesn't matter if it's gray or brown. 
Uh, and also you've got a lot of adjustment on there as well, uh, up and down. There's a little rubber seal in there that makes a nice rubber seal. So if you need to make this shorter, you can cut that off and know that it's always gonna seal up. The two big yellow plastic bits are purely for protecting stuff going into the pipework after you fix the frame. So if the tiler's coming in and the plumber's not on site or something like that, you can pop these over there to stop the tiler accidentally getting stuff into your flush pipe or down into the soil stack. So that's really handy. We then have our toilet pan connector with large rubber collar that will go onto the toilet. This is also very easily adjustable as well and will fit in to the back of this nice and easily like that. Endless reams of paperwork and instructions, and I highly recommend you read these, okay? As I've said before, ladies, read the instructions and get it right first time. And if you're a man like me, do what I always do, throw these away and just go hell for leather at trying to figure out yourself how to do it and get it wrong. So whatever you do, read the instructions. I mean, it's obvious. You'll also find this small black clip. This comes in later when it comes to stabilizing our saw pipe outlet onto our frame. So we'll talk about that soon. Depending on which toilet you buy, you'll get a fitting kit for your loo as well, but this only comes with a toilet. Next up, you've got your standard fittings, screws, plugs, stuff like that. We've got our flush pipe here as well, which we'll talk about in a minute. We've got our flush pipe rubber cone, which makes a watertight seal between the flush pipe and the actual toilet bowl. We've got some more fixings here, some washers and some nuts. Then we've got our hole cut out for our vitro control later on. Our actual manual control that we should be changing later on when we do our nice infrared vitro controller. Some studding here as well with protective sheaths. I'm pretty sure this will be used to hold the toilet up in a minute. Lastly, and you have to buy this separately, so see it is you choose your frame, then you choose what kind of loo you want, and then you choose the finish of your button or the actual mechanical way that your button works. Lastly, you've got our lovely, and I'm going to try and show this to you without getting sticky hands on it, uh, controller. This is infrared. So we've got our little control pack here. You have to buy a power pack for these separately as well. Look at that. I did get it out last night, so I kind of got grubby fingers on it already. But then you've got your infrared bit here. But also, if you want to use manual flush steel, you can do that as well and override it. So that's great, isn't it? Remember, you might not need to use all of these components. It depends on the particular install that you're doing. Right, so now we know what we've got in our box all laid out here, nice and easy. Let's actually go through into the room, pop this up against the wall, a little bit of box. Oh, so you see my bum crack. What we do, right, we ascertain exactly where we want our waste to be. We can make sure exactly where that's gonna go. To go over to their special kind of waste pipe, all we do is pop this in. That goes straight on to our standard gray pipe on here. Probably a little bit of lube could probably go on there as well, but look, that's on there already. We can then pop this pipe on here, we can adjust the height we've got, so we can twist this up to where we want it. We can also adjust how far out this piece sticks out, roughly about 18 centimetres off the wall, so we've got a lot of gear. Now the thing is, we can pop this over to where we want it now, roughly here. Am I happy with that being there? I am pretty happy with that. I think that's going to go lovely just there. The next thing I want to do is figure out exactly how high I want my toilet off the floor. <laughs> So can you see how close we are already to figuring out roughly where we want our loo? That we've got our centre holes here, okay, these holes in a minute we're going to use to actually hang our loo on when we've got all our wall done and everything. Great thing is, is that you can use this, this here as roughly as the top of the loo, so that's really, really handy. So I want the loo to be 17 inches, the top of the loo to be roughly 17 inches off the ground. At the moment we are 16, so I want to give it another inch. It's so easy to do with the system that they've got for adjusting it. The best method I've found for this is to lay the toilet frame down on the floor and then use your tape measure to measure from the top line down to whatever height you require. So for this one, roughly 17 inches, and then pull the legs down to correspond with your tape measure, and then just nip up lightly the nuts, because in a minute when we marry up our frame onto the wall, we're probably gonna have to do a small amount of adjustment if the floor's out of level. Just a tiny, tiny bit, actually that's perfect. Right then guys, so now I've got this installed, I can sort of visualise where we're going to go. What we do next is we measure the width of holes that we've got for our particular toilet, and then we use those holes 
for the specific ones on here. So we've got a seven inch gap on this. This is where you need to improvise a little bit as well, because let's face it, we're going onto a plasterboard wall here with studs. So first of all, we've got to do is we've got to build across some four by two to pick up our studs, and then we can pick that up onto this. So we're going to do that in a second. The other thing as well is that Vitra's instructions stipulate that our toilet stud should tie on to a back plate on the back wall there, like so, then come through our hole here, where it's then married up by two small nuts and then goes into the back of the loo. The thing is, right, is our back plates on this don't pick up with the plasterboard on here. But if I go further through, I will pick up on the plywood cladding on the outside. And in a way, that's a good thing because it shows that whatever you do, doesn't matter what the instructions are, just see these as guidance. You do still need to have a bit of improvisation about you to successfully be a plumber and also, well, to successfully be a tradesman in anything. It's never an easy job. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to figure out exactly where I can drill my holes through, get the plates popped onto my wood on the other side and then get my studs all the way through. Then I know I'm going to be happy. Also, now that I visualise where we are at the moment, I'm just going to bring the toilet height up by half an inch. Just looks a little bit low to me. There is like a, a there is a, a corridor of guidance for that as well. So just check it out online. Sit down on some boxes and measure the height of the boxes if you want, just so you know you're happy. Right then, guys, now we've got our studding in. And what I've done there, because we couldn't go onto the plate, we've gone all the way through the wall, plated at the back, reinforced that back bit, and then that'll get covered over later on when I get my chippies back to do a little bit more work. <laughs> exactly where I want to mark my holes for my feet going down so I can get that done and plugged but I won't screw them just yet because what I want to do is get my 4x2 across the back here and make sure that that's all okay as well. You may have noticed there we've put our bolts in but we haven't fully tightened them up yet. That's because we need to put a little bit of swing forwards and backwards to make sure in a second that we can get our level and get our supporting stud work just right. Right guys, at this point in the job, I'd like to point out that everything is different for every type of job. For instance, this job, our frame is so far out from the wall and also our wall needs to be braced so we can actually tie into the strong points in the studding of the wall that we have to build out with some 4x2 wood the actual fixings for our frame's feet. But the thing that is the same across the board is to make sure that however you fix the frame at the top, you have to make sure that the frame is level forward and backward with your spirit level. That's the most important thing. So let's have a look at the setup that I've got now that I've leveled it forward and backwards and fitted it at the top. Right then guys, so we've got our bit of wood in. This is absolutely solid. And you know, we've, we're doing everything we can here to make sure that there's not gonna be any problem with load bearing in a minute. Just made a pilot hole, pilot hole here. I'm just gonna make sure this is nice and level now. So that's probably gonna go up like half a mil. So it might've just been knocked around. So in a minute we can just change that on here and make sure that's all okay. Now we can get this fixed. So before we do our sort of final tightening nips and everything, let's just make sure we're nice and level here. And there we go. We have now successfully fitted our frame to the wall. Right then guys, so if you have a quick overview of what we've done, we've got our feet put down like that. We've got our lovely studs in just here. And then going up to the top, we've got our strengthening bracket across the top. And look, if we give that a wiggle, that is absolutely not going anywhere. It's rock solid. Really, really pleased with that and very happy to go on to the next stage. Right then guys, as of this stage of the job, we now need to think about how we're gonna be doing our waste pipe and also getting it so it's held in position so it receives our toilet properly in a minute. Now usually Vitra, and this is really helpful, they supply a clip that goes onto the bottom of our mount, just like so, and then that holds everything in position. So if you push the toilet up against it, things like that, there's a good, good grip that that clip's got on there and it's not gonna start pushing around the elbow at the back, which is so, so annoying sometimes when that happens. Or maybe swap the clip side orientation around and get it the other way, just so it grabs that collar nice and safely. And then what we're gonna do is start thinking about what we're gonna be putting over the top of this and how far back we need to maybe cut this if we need to. If we need to at all, we might not have to, you know, and that might be exactly the right size there already. So you guys can have a quick think about that while I faff about getting this sorted out. <laughs> this my whole life is just a laugh of faffing. <laughs> right then 
guys, so now we're all attached to the wall and everything's okay. Just wanna to talk to you about the water connection. They come stripped down. The valve is integral, so it's under here. So if you've got a problem with the water supply, you've got a problem with the toilet, you don't have to shut the valve, the main's off to the rest of the house. You can just shut it off on here, whip that off and work on it, okay? So up top here, you feel a little click. Right, so we might need a bit of joining compound in a minute, but really, standard job, bit of PTFE round here. Then I'm gonna get this little elbow on, we're gonna point that and just get that so it runs nicely into our little 15 mil pipe here. But you guys can watch that in quick time. So it doesn't matter that no one's ever going to see it. You are going to see it. You're going to be the one who knows that you didn't clean that down properly. If you just give yourself a few minutes cleaning the pipe, it gives you subconsciously an opportunity to inspect the work you've just done to make sure if you've not done anything obvious like missed a solder or you think you might have a dry solder or something like that or you need to nip up the compression fitting, anything, just make sure you always clean your pipe work down because it's time to thick and also it just looks lovely as well. Right, so the water's back on, so I should be able to open this up now. We should hear, yeah, rushing water. Excellent, right, so there we go. Now we can just pressure test and just check all our pipe work for any leaks. We're just gonna wind on our nuts on here and make sure that our locking nuts are on. Got a locking nut at the back there uh, that we're gonna need. So we're gonna put those on now, but anyway, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna build my frame up to go round this. You guys aren't gonna to wanna to watch that, it's gonna take ages, uh, but I will do it in quick time if you want. So anyway, in a few seconds time, once I've got my frame made around it, it should all look a little bit more like this. Right then guys, so there we go, we've got our frame together now. Now we can think about getting our button arrangement in and also our special cowl. I've just got my cowl in here now. These are really, really handy. The next step, this bit is gonna help us move on for when it comes to tiling, but look, Ooh, that is strong and it's not going to move. So let's move on to the next stage and actually get this hardy back it out, ready for tiling and ready for installing the toilet and finishing off. So a quick look internally at what we've got here. We slide this box up and what we're going to do in a minute when we come to Hardy Backer, this is what we're going to go around. You'll notice these ripples here to know where you can cut it. So you've got quite a fair play of wall depth as well. Always keep this handy. Keep all your instructions handy. In fact, a little thing that I often do if I'm on site is I'll get my instructions and I'll sellotape them to the walls if they haven't been plastered and painted yet. And then you've always got them there just to refer to, a bit like a battle plan. But anyway, so we're gonna put this in now. Then the two flush paddles in there are very, very easy to fit. So usually what we'll do, we'll fit our standard flush paddle. They go into the back like so. So hook them under here. Then we can pop that in there and then these two are ready then to actually flush the loo. Uh, then we can put our secondary plate on. Vitra will supply the instructions for this in the box when you buy the specific plate that you want to fit. So there we go. Because we've got a mechanised plate in this, we're not going to be using this setup here. I can remove this one. So instead, because we've got our mechanical plate, we're going to pop that in here. That goes exactly the same way. We've just got to get these two. So they're flopped down and they just grab onto them like that. There we go. For now, we're not gonna do all the finishing up of everything for yet, but I am just gonna pop our little protective cover in here like so, and that'll stop stuff going in there. And then I'm gonna put my cover on here like so. And now I know that I'm ready to get my hardy backer on here and get ready to tile. Use your epic measuring skills to get this bit absolutely perfect. Bitra also help out by sending you a basic drawing of where all the inlets and outlets should be, but I'd always measure up as well, just in case. we've got this all in we've got all our hardy backer on here now and that's all ready for us to tile so i'm going to tile it now guys i don't want you to watch us do this like i say i can tile but i'm not a tiler and there's a difference isn't there so i'm going to get all this tiled now and you can critique how bad my tiling is in a minute um, so let's get it done so in a second when i've tiled it it should look just like this so after days of total hell doing some tiling i've got to say it's not oh, just not a big fan of doing tiling much prefer the tilers to do it we are ready right 
what I want to do before we do any of the work here is just get the electrical connection done for our actual controller for our flush unit in a minute. As you can see, there's quite a lot here, but don't be daunted by it. It's all very, very easy, very, very simple to do as well. So we're just gonna get that done now. All we need to do is drill an entry hole for our wire to go into the top of our system and then plug our transformer in. Nice and easy. Right guys, once we've got that in, I am just gonna flop these two little wires out of the way because what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut this plate back flush. <laughs> Great, so now all I've got to do is follow the instructions to actually get this piece installed. So let's just pop this out, flop my two wires through, and I'm going to set our attention straight back in there. If you follow the instructions, you won't go far wrong. So we are just going to pop off our little back plate like so. That just comes off nice and easily like that. And then we're going to install our back plate just on here. Now once we've got this installed, we'll need to cut down your little retaining screws. Then all you've got to do is push this in as far as you can and just get that to lock like so, okay? And that's now nicely installed. It's also a good idea now just to get your spirit level across here and make sure that that's nice and level. At this point, you'll also have to measure and cut your manual dipstick for the manual side of the flush. Very easy to do, just measure it out so it's flush with the actual front of the plate like it's been shown here. And then you sort of half twist it in to lock it in place and that's done. Now all we need to do, and it's so, so simple, plug our controller in like so. Right, get all these back in together. So try and get your wires so they're nicely out of the way of everything. It's just a matter of pushing on, then running it over a little bit so it gets into the lugs. That looks absolutely gorgeous. And then I just use the little Allen key supplied to just quickly nip this up here and then tighten this in. And that's it, we're done. And if we give this a try, there we go, we've got that running already. next bit you're about to do isn't easy and you are going to need your wits about you to get it right but we'll be able to walk you through it hopefully and get you done so first part of the stage let's get our flush done we can measure inside the toilet there's a small lip just here and if we left that with 35 mils sticking out actually 40 mil i'm pretty happy that we'll be okay for our flush and then let's just get this cut off So I'm gonna just pop my cone over here now. In a minute, before we push this in, I'm just gonna put a little bit of lubricant on that. Same goes for this. In a minute, when we put this all on, it's slightly rough. Uh, we're just gonna put a little bit of lubricant on there as well. Very liquid or silicon spray is totally fine for this. Vitra have thought up a really, really intuitive way for you to fix the toilet from the top. Once you've done it once, you'll find it miles easier. You remember all your measurements and everything again and again and again. What you're gonna need is a hacksaw. You're gonna need a tape and you're also going to need a file. So the first thing you want to do, build up the plastic part of this segment that goes into the toilet. So to do that, undo this little Allen key here and then whip out the metal insert that we're going to do in a minute. Do that to both sides and just keep the metal inserts out of the way. You have this piece here will go into the toilet hole just at the back like that. And then you've got a small thread in there. What we want to do is we just want to do these up and we want to leave it. So this Allen key here is available for us to tighten up through the hole that tightens up on our toilet seat in a minute. So what we want to do is get this so it's nice, just nipped up and tight. Now I'm looking through the top here to see if I can get to that and I can. If you think you can get a set of grips in there to get that tightened up and for it in the complete right way, then do that. So before you move on to the next stage, you should be able to see this from the top hole and this from the back. That's kind of what you should be looking at. Okay, so all we need to do is follow the instructions. It says we want to leave 10 mil of thread at the back of our little piece. So we're just going to measure that there and that gives us an overall measurement of about 85 millimeters. So that means that our hole is roughly about 65. So if I'm just going to marry that up here and make sure that is bang on 65. I'm going to cut both of these off at 40 millimetres, just like, guess what, the instructions tell me to. Right, so we're just going to get these wound on now, get these measured out so we know that we're exactly where we want to be. So I know how far off I want to be off the wall. So man, that's at 65. I'm not even going to give that a thread, I don't think. Perfect. Right then guys, so finally we've got to the stage of the job that I'm sure you lot have all been waiting for. Uh, just getting this installed. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of lube on here. Really, you can't have enough lubricant when doing this sort of work. 
Uh, we want everything to slip in nice and easily so we get it all over the place. Fairy liquid is as good as anything when it comes to getting all this done. So I'm just running a bit of lube at the moment over here. I'm just gonna get some inside our cone on this as well. It should all push together really, really nicely. So what have you noticed? There's a little tip. I've got my two Allen keys. These are both supplied with the lube when you buy it. We've got them in now. Let's just get this hung up and have a quick look and see how we go. So I've got to say, I'm so impressed with this system. Oh, it's ridiculous. How can you get excited by this sort of thing, Jim? But you do, don't you? Right, so get our top hole started like so. Just make sure that our cone goes on at the back. That's in. Then we just push the hole back together, all together, bang, and like that. Use our weight then to hold this up in position and then tighten these up. Nip these up as hard as you think you want to. Remember, you're only ever going onto porcelain here. So it's all about judging it a little bit, really. I'd say that's never going anywhere. Right then, so I've obviously put everything together now and I'm happy that it's all there. I don't know why I always have that sort of way of working whereby I like to get everything in and done and then filled up properly with water. But that's just my way of doing things. Everyone's got their own way of doing stuff and that's just life. I can now turn on my water supply and get this filled up. I'm just gonna wait a few minutes before I put everything back together just to make sure that this shuts off at the right height. Right then guys, I've tested it, it flushes fine. I'm just gonna give this a lovely siliconing up. I do that before the toilet seat goes on. I think you guys are gonna guess why. The toilet seat gets in the way. It's a bit like the taps getting in the way when you're siliconing up a basin or something like that. I've plugged this in, so if I put my hand up against this right now, we should see this flush. Oh, that's exciting. I don't know why, but it is. But also, there are automatic settings for this. Vitra send out a pretty comprehensive guide as to how to get these set up. Follow that guide, okay? The general gist of it is all you really need to do is turn it on, then get out of the room, leave it for a few minutes. You should hear it flush on its own, and then after that, uh, it will go into its sort of automatic mode. If you're a standard lady or a man and you use the toilet from six to 40 seconds, then it's gonna give you a three litre flush. If you use a little bit more, if you sit there for a little bit longer, obviously you're obviously doing something slightly different in the world of toilet use. Yeah, and uh, it's gonna do a longer flush to get away uh, whatever you may have put in the toilet. Also, you can auto flush just like that by pressing that button and also put your hand up against that as well and that will do it automatically for you. So there we go, guys. This beautiful toilet is now installed. I've got to say, after looking through the instructions on how to actually fix the toilet to the wall, I think this is possibly one of the best ways you can do it. I think Vitra have come up with a great idea there. The way that you can do all of that through those top two holes, but also if you want to, you can undo it. You don't have any of those unsightly screws as well on the side of the toilet, and also they're so annoying sometimes, aren't they, to silicon round. We don't have that problem with this loo. Also, I love the finish of the infrared flush. That's absolutely quality. Looking at it, it might not be the sort of thing you have in your home, but if you've got a downstairs loo uh, where most of your visitors go in and out, I definitely recommend that you think about putting one of these in. They're cost effective. They're not a mad amount of money. I'll leave some links to Vitra's website for this stuff below as well. And if you need any more information, don't hesitate to contact them. I hope you've enjoyed today's video, guys. Please follow us on Instagram. If you did, you'd have seen the stories of me going through the utter hell that is tiling. <laughs> I'm just gonna go in here now, look, give it another little flush. <laughs> so anyway, thanks ever so much for watching today's videos, guys. Please subscribe, please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, and Twitter. And I'll see you in our next video. Thanks ever so much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Love you all. Hold tight. I'm gonna go and do a poo now. See you later.
Actually, I won't. Thank you, everybody. So subscribe. Mm -hmm. Give it a vote for the